I am so glad that you are here. It's 2018 and that means that you are blessed to see another year, to see another day. And I'm so glad that you're here listening to this podcast. I I thank God that I made it another year, another day, and that I'm here to give you great content. I love what I do, and it's just so great to be alive. And I just feel like this is going to be my best year yet. How about you? Okay, so on this episode, I'm going to talk about how to attract your dream clients in the next 30 days. Now, this episode ran a little longer than what this podcast is normally, so I've broken it up into multiple podcasts. So you're going to get an episode today and then you'll get another one next week and then you'll get another one the week after that. So grab your pen and your notebook. I'm going to go over three steps. The first step you're going to hear on this episode on how you can attract your dream clients in the next 30 days. And this is how you get clients. Are you ready? I can't wait. Let's begin. April Reed here, and you're listening to episode 17 of the Webinar Hustlers Entrepreneur Podcast. Want to work less and sell more? Welcome to the Webinar Hustlers Entrepreneur Podcast, the podcast to help you scale up and take your business to the next level with webinars that sell for you. Each episode focuses on the money mindset, online marketing, and sales strategies to get you more leads and convert leads to sales, all with webinars. And now your host, business and webinar strategist, April Reed. Before we get into the three-step process, let's break down some of the myths that are serving you as barriers and holding you back from all your business has to offer. Myth number one, you need to have a website in order to get those first few clients. Now, let me clarify. Yes, you want a website, but you don't have to put your business on hold or wait to launch your business until your website is up and running. As a matter of fact, I advise not to lead with your website because how do you know what copy to put on your site if you haven't worked with any clients or two and know what's going to resonate with them and know exactly what it is that they need? What really tends to happen is that people will create their site first and then they find based on the clients to get afterwards, they have to redo their entire site and that's just money and time wasted. The second biggest myth that's holding you back is thinking and believing free is free. Well, I'm here to tell you that free is not always free. When you download all those freebies, when you are just eating up, eating up content, 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 that's costing you time. It's costing you money. It's like information overload. And You'll have several projects that you started or you don't know where to start, so you don't start at all. Lastly, the biggest myth that's holding you back is thinking that it's enough to be your own ideal client and creating a product or a service and then trying to sell it without first seeing if it's anything that your people would even actually want. The number one reason you're struggling right now is thinking you need full clarity in order to get your first paying client or to take action. Clarity comes from action. You don't need to know exactly who you're going to sell to and what you're going to sell before you start. If you've done your market research, which includes interviewing at least three people in your target market, then you're ready to start selling. And this is important because thinking it's enough to be your own ideal client and creating the products and the service and trying to sell them without seeing if anything anybody wants, 
is going to hurt your pocket. It's going to hurt that bottom line. Without further ado, let's get into the three step process, the simple three-step process for attracting your dream clients in the next 30 days, even if you are an unknown. Step number one is the identify your dream client method. So why is this important? When you speak to everyone, you speak to no one. And the right steps you want to be doing is using a targeted, specific, approach and not a general one. When you use the right steps, your ideal client is great, but your dream client is simply out of this world. They're amazing and astounding, and it's going to position you and your business to start making the big bucks fast. And it's also going to help you connect with the dream clients in a way that captivates them and moves them to action. So just really quickly, what is a dream client, you know, versus an IDA client? Well, just think of your dream client is your soulmate client. It's the client that is perfect. They have everything you want in a client. They don't have to figure out how to afford your services. They don't have to wait. They don't have to think about it. They know their problem and they know you can solve them and they are ready to go. And then once once they have invested in you and you guys started working, they get results. They get awesome results because they're willing to do whatever you tell them because they know, like, and they trust you and they are awesome clients. Basically, it's a client that has particularly everything on your checklist. If you had a, okay, this is my dream client checklist, everything they, that I want my dream client to have, that's a dream client. I want you to clearly understand that coaching is a luxury and not everybody is going to invest in coaching and not everybody is going to be able to afford coaching, which is why you can also carve out time for people who can't afford to work with you longer term or who can't afford your higher rates. But I want you to do this consciously. I want it to be on purpose. So maybe you carve out time on Fridays where you have a low cost group. People can call in um, and they can work with you. And it's a, it's a very intimate group of three people, five people, 10 people, 10 people in a group. And all those people, they can only afford $40. They, they can't afford $3,000 coaching. They can only afford $40 to be on this group call. And you give them the best of you. You're on this call for an hour. You're giving them your best stuff and you'll be leveraging. And so one hour, 10 people, $40 a piece for one hour, that's $400. However, again, I want you to really go after those level three clients, those clients that want total transformation. But you can also carve an out time for people who just can't afford your services. And so again, you want to be solving problems. You want to be solving problems, and I'm sure you've heard of this before, that are painful and urgent and expensive. But let's dive deeper into this a little bit. So this pain, this number one pain point that they have, this has to be costing them big time. It has to be costing them time. It has to be costing them money. Um, Maybe it's costing joy in their life. Maybe it's costing their family in some way. You have to be solving problems that are painful and urgent and expensive and and they're just snowballing and it's causing grief and it's causing them to regret. It's causing them to say, oh my gosh, I hate this. 
is causing them to stay up at night staring at their ceiling because they can't sleep. All they're thinking about is, how can I make this pain go away? How can I solve this? I can't even sleep. You've got to be solving problems that these people know they can't solve on their own. Now, I'm going to say that again. You got to be solving problems that these people, they know. They know they can't solve on their own because people are resourceful and we will go through, women, woo, we will go through some stuff, wouldn't we? Because, oh, we'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. We stay in situations way too long because we can figure it out on our own. And so you don't want to be speaking to people who are at that place where they can figure it out on their own. You want to speak to your dream client and your dream client know they can't solve it on their own and they know they can't figure it out on their own because they've already tried and it didn't work out. And so take this time to really understand your dream client's pain point. And sometimes you'll have to interview people. And here is a quote by Abraham Lincoln. Give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four sharpening the axe. Axe. (laughs) Sorry. So, yes, you want to take this time and, and really dive into who they are, you kind of already know who they are because maybe they were you six months ago, but get into their shoes, get into their mind. What are the words they're using? What are their issues? And and interviewing people to figure out in a particular, your particular niche, like entrepreneurs, for example, you want to know What are the problems that they're struggling with? That may be the problems that you just so happen to solve. So that's important too. You are, you're interviewing people that you feel are your ideal client and they list a number one pain point. But if that's something you don't solve, do not focus on that pain point unless you're going to restructure your business to where you do solve that pain point, And then by that means, you know, go ahead. But if that's nothing you solve, then don't focus on that just because it's their number one pain point. Maybe you solve something else, but you want to solve a problem that is urgent and expensive and is snowballing and it's regretful And it's something that you happen to solve already. You don't have to try to take another course because somebody has an issue that you don't know two cents about. Again, these are your dream clients, so they have the problem you're trying to solve. And so, again, you want to dive into what's really important Because when you speak to everyone, you speak to no one and your message is vague. And when you speak to no one in particular, the people who are your target market may not even hear you talking to them because your message just doesn't resonate with them. If you're trying to speak to everybody because you're afraid to niche down or you're afraid to specialize, if you try to speak to everyone, what might end up happening is you increase your chances of attracting the wrong client. And what a waste of time track attracting people who just don't fit what you're trying to sell. And now you're on the call with them or you're, you're on Facebook with them and they're just not a complete match. But here's what's really going on. People are attracting the nice to haves. And so that's what's going on instead. And so in the U.S., we have a shrinking middle class. Do you know who has disposable income? 
Well, it's people who are earning $75,000 a year or more. They have disposable income, meaning they can't afford coaching. They have the money to buy the product from you or service, and they can sign up for $3,000 coaching with you, $5,000 coaching with you, even $10,000 of coaching with you. It's the people earning over $75,000 a year. Now, people earning $50,000 a year, can they not invest in coaching? Yes, yes, they can. They invest in coaching as well, but we really want to focus on or around people that are making $75,000 per year. But here's the problem with that. You're marketing your goods and your services to people who just can't afford you. So let's say, you know, you are a financial coach. And it's like, I focus on people who are struggling to pay off debt because you also want people who can pay you. We would be thinking more about working with people who are moving away from debt and who want to shift from debt to creating wealth. So again, if you're like a financial coach and you want to help people fix their credit, and get out of debt. Uh, People who just want to get out of debt may not be able to justify hiring a coach, especially if this is going to be your, your signature coaching package or consulting package. But you want to shift your thinking a little bit. What about people who are moving away from debt who want to create wealth. Now, people who want to go the distance, who want to go from debt that they have now into a state of incredible wealth, they are going to invest. So you can have clients who have debt, but they have to be interested in the bigger dream than the need of getting out from under this debt because they may not, be the clients who can pay you. They're asking, how am I going to pay for these sessions? And I'm trying to get out and I'm trying to pay off my debt. People will invest with you even when they have debt. If you're finding people who want to have a total transformation and go beyond, they're going to invest even if they have debt because you're solving a bigger problem and there's a bigger payoff and benefit. And these are great questions that you can ask yourself and your clients. What's the transformation that you're going to provide? That's very important. And so you might be thinking, well, how do I even get access to people who are earning $75,000 a year? I don't even earn $75,000 a year. They're making more than me. Well, it's going to be people that have a professional career, They went to college, um, they have a higher degree, they have a professional career or had a professional career. What happens when you don't fix this? Well, if you don't think about this and think about your ideal client, your dream client, and what issues they're having, you'll do what a lot of incredibly talented coaches have done before which is spend years working, working, and working and marketing their goods and services to people who just cannot afford them, who can't even afford the level three coaching. This sounds like a great place to stop. I hope you received a lot of nuggets in today's episode. And it's really, really, really important that you understand your ideal clients or dream clients' biggest pain point and struggle. And you know what? I just want to add one more thing. So sometimes when you're serving your list or you're getting your potential clients on the phone and you're asking them what their number one struggle is in your field, I want you to understand something very, very important that goes along with this. Just because it's their number one struggle, 
in your industry or or in that segment of your business in your niche, it doesn't mean that their pain is urgent. Just because it's their number one or biggest struggle in your niche, in your industry, does not necessarily mean that it's the struggle that is keeping them up at night. A lot of times you're going to talk to someone and yes, it's going to be their biggest struggle, but it's not a big deal right now. It's not a big deal for them to solve it right now. And it's important to learn how to distinguish between the two. How to distinguish when the number one struggle that they're going through is not something that they need solved yesterday. So when you're asking these questions, go beyond what's your biggest struggle, what's your number one challenge. Go beyond that. We want to know what's urgent, what is killing you, what is agonizing you. What do you need solved like yesterday? We want that number one biggest struggle. We all have struggles in some areas. But does that necessarily mean that that biggest struggle and that potential niche is the thing that's keeping us up at night? Not necessarily. It's just a struggle. It's a struggle that we don't see important right now. So when you're doing these surveys and when you're doing these market research calls, it's very important to not only gather the information or the biggest struggle, the biggest challenges, the number one pain point, but also making sure that this is a pain that is keeping them up at night. It's, it's costing them time with their family and it's something that they do actually need to solve ASAP. And a very, very good question to ask to understand if this is a problem that they need solved like yesterday is on a scale of one to 10, how committed are you to making this uh, problem go away? And if it's anything under a seven, it's not a big enough problem for them right now. Yes, it's their number one struggle. It's their biggest challenge, but they don't care about it at this point in the game. Okay, so I just wanted to add that one piece. And like I said, this seems like a good place to stop. So I want you to come to the show next week and listen to lesson two of how to attract your dream clients in the next 30 days. I hope this has been beneficial for you. I hope you got a lot of nuggets and you have any questions, please reach out to me and you can see the text version of this episode at www.aprilreed.com forward slash 17. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Webinar Hustlers Entrepreneur Podcast at www.aprilreed.com.